powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us this Tuesday. I'm Janelle Slade. And I'm Jay Cohn. Well, a heads up tonight for residents living in the Happy Homes apartment complex on the west end of Billings. A resident there says a staff maintenance worker used a master key to unlock her apartment door and steal prescription drugs. She also says the crime is caught on camera. Billings police telling Q2 News that a burglary was reported at the complex back on October 16th, the Happy Homes complex near King and Shiloh. But because this investigation is still active, police say they're not confirming that the suspect is a Happy Homes employee. Now, the resident who lives at the apartment tells Q2 surveillance video captured the employee unlocking the door, entering the apartment, and then taking prescription drugs. Now she wants other residents to be aware and check their medication. Happy Homes declined to comment. Another election mailer, another mistake. This latest mailer sent out to voters by the Republican National Committee, but it contains instructions to get your absentee ballot on in time. But the last step at the bottom tells voters that as long as their ballots are postmarked by November 5th and received within 10 days of election day, they will be counted. Now that is not the case. Here in Montana, ballots must be received by no later than 8 p.m. on election day, which is Tuesday, November 6th. And that means if you don't think your ballot can get there in time, you need to drop it off in person at your county election office in order for it to be counted. So far, more than 23,000 absentee ballots have been returned here in Yellowstone County. On the statewide scene, more than 110,000 ballots have already been returned. But there is still time to register to vote. If you haven't already, you can register. You must do it in person at your local elections office up through Election Day. The 2018 midterm elections, two weeks away. Tonight, we reveal the latest results from the MTN News Montana State University poll surrounding Montana's U.S. House race. Now, this poll shows Republican incumbent Greg Gianforte leading Democratic challenger Kathleen Williams by seven points. Our chief political reporter, Mike Dennison, is here to break down the numbers. The MTN MSU poll of 2,000 registered Montana voters gives Republican Greg Gianforte a seven and a half point lead over Democrat Kathleen Williams, 47.6% to 40.1%. 2.4% of those polls say they're supporting libertarian Eleanor Swanson, but 10% are undecided or supporting someone else. The poll has a margin of error of plus or minus 2% and was taken during a three week period between September 17th and October 6th. MTN political analyst David Parker says these numbers show Gianforte is a clear favorite in the race, but he also sees a narrow path that Williams could pursue to make it closer. I see growth potential in the fact that if she can get more women, especially married women, because 11% of married women are undecided in this race. That tells me there might be some coolness, some leeriness, some wariness towards Greg Gianforte that she could capitalize in this race. The poll shows that more women voters overall support Williams, 47% to 41% over Gianforte. But Gianforte has a huge advantage among male voters who favor him 54% to 34%. He also has a big or solid lead among all voters 40 and older while Williams leads only among those younger than 40, a group that usually has lower turnout. And Gianforte has a substantial lead among voters with less than a college degree, a group that makes up a majority of Montanans. One bright spot for Williams is that she leads among voters who call themselves independents, a big voting block in Montana. But Parker says for Williams to pull an upset, she needs not only these independents, but also a lot of other dominoes to fall her way. Kathleen to win, everything's got to go right. She needs to have high Democratic voter turnout. She needs to have those independents move in her direction. And then she's got to hope for some Republicans either move towards her or don't show up. Republicans have won this seat for 12 consecutive elections. Our poll indicates that streak will likely stay intact. And that breaking it is a possibility, but a long shot. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. All right, thank you very much, Mike. Next up for the MTN MSU poll, well, we'll take a look at the two major ballot measures facing Montana voters this fall. So Wednesday night, we'll bring you the new poll numbers on why I-185, the Medicaid expansion measure, along with I-186, that would deny permits for new hard rock mines in the state unless certain environmental restrictions are met. 
One of the big tobacco giants has put in another $5 million into the campaign against Initiative 185. And supporters of the Medicaid expansion tobacco tax ballot measure have added nearly $3 million to their campaign effort. Now, the campaign over I-185 is now the second most expensive campaign in Montana this year, trailing only the U.S. Senate race. In the past three weeks, Altria, the makers of Marlboro cigarettes, loaned the anti-I-185 campaign $5 million. Overall, Altria has contributed $12.5 million of the $17.5 million for the campaign against Initiative 185, which raises tobacco taxes to help fund Medicaid expansion. Most of the other $5 million has come from RAI, which is the Reynolds tobacco firm. On the other hand, Montana hospitals are leading the campaign in support of I-185. They've pitched in another $2 million in just the past three weeks, upping their total to nearly $5.7 million out of the entire campaign bankroll of some $7.7 .7 million. I-185 would make permanent the Medicaid expansion program in Montana, which currently insures as many as 100,000 low-income adults. Now, the initiative would raise tobacco taxes by $2 a pack to help fund the state's share of Medicaid expansion. Divers, search and rescue teams, and a tracking team from Wyoming. Just some of the many resources being used in the ongoing search for a Canadian man who went missing in the area of the Prior Road. There's still no sign of 37-year-old Cam Collin last seen on October 4th when he was attending a bachelor party. Today, though, a new tactic is the Yellowstone County Sheriff's Office brought in a canine team with a boat to comb Prior Creek looking for any clues. I'm glad to come up and help them. This is my second time up here, and um, this is where my skills are. I do a lot of water. At this point, the search still taking place at the property on Prior Road where Colin was last seen. Today, we learned from Cam's sister, Julia, that he had attended Montana Tech in Butte. In fact, he was here in Billings to attend the wedding of a good friend from college. Julia has been in town for several days, walking the area, hanging posters, and giving as much information to police as she can find. She says she's trying to stay strong and keep hope alive. And I'm just trying to keep this in everybody's minds and keep people, keep people thinking about Cam and keeping an eye out for him. Um, I'm confident that he's out there um, and that we will find him. And uh, I'm hoping that America will help me do that. The Colin family is offering a $5,000 reward for any information about Cam's whereabouts. I mean, the weather, Bob, it turns out Halloween isn't going to be the scariest part of October. <laughs> it's going to be the forecast. I'm afraid that's going to be the case. You know, up until Halloween, it's going to be wonderful weather, 50s and 60s. Then when the kids go trick-or-treating, here's what happens. This is October 30th through November 5th. It's our 8 to 14 day outlook and this is what the temperature is saying. It's leaning below normal across Montana, across Billings, all the way down towards Texas and Oklahoma panhandles in that area. It'll be above normal on the west coast and on the Gulf Coast and even on the east coast. But what about precipitation? Well, looks like that's going to be a little bit above normal as well. All across the deep south are looking at above normal precipitation. Here in Montana, Wyoming, the Dakotas, and even parts of Minnesota, we have a 33 to 40 percent chance of above normal or average precipitation on those days, October 30th through November 5th. Oh boy. We'll have the rest of your local forecast. Just a little short range one coming up in a few more minutes, guys. All right, thanks so much, Bob. The number of Montana medical marijuana patients keeps growing. Recent data from the State Department of Public Health and Human Services shows just over 29,000 medical marijuana patients with providers. That's an increase of about 2,500 just since July. Now, those patients are served by 390 state approved providers with 30 additional provider applications now pending. The state data shows Gallatin County has the most patients and providers with more than 5,200 cardholders and nearly 100 providers. The largest group of cardholders are adults ages 30 to 40, and 43% of all cardholders are under the age of 40. One third of the state's providers serve three or fewer patients. However, state data shows one provider with more than 2,000 cardholders. And the number one condition for a medical marijuana prescription in Montana is severe chronic pain. LGBTQ and civil rights activists around the country protesting a memo that they say would roll back 
protections for transgender people. According to the memo obtained by the New York Times over the weekend, the Department of Health and Human Services is spearheading an effort to establish a legal definition of sex under the Title IX of the Civil Rights Act. Now, the review drafts that the agency's proposed definition would define sex as either male or female, unchangeable and determined by the genitals that a person is born with. The Times says the new definition would essentially eradicate federal recognition of Americans who have opted to recognize themselves, surgically or otherwise, as a gender other than the one they were born into. Disability Rights Montana attorney Bobby Zinker says this memo could present a number of problems for transgender people, especially when it comes to their official documents, such as a driver's license or even hunter registration cards. Zenker says the trans community is most worried about the repeated effort in places like North Carolina to keep the LGBTQ community out of spaces such as public restrooms. If you have legislation that would not allow people to do that, that effectively keeps those people out of public spaces. So um, that is what that effort does, is to let's not allow certain groups of people into public spaces. So um, in that sense, we're not recognizing their humanity. The groups like the Human Rights Campaign posted to social media on Sunday asking Congress to take action by advancing the Equality Act to ensure that LGBTQ people are explicitly protected by our nation's civil rights laws. Meanwhile, President Trump had this to say to reporters about the memo Monday. We're looking at it. We have a lot of different uh, concepts right now. Uh, they have a lot of different things happening with respect to transgender right now. You know that as well as I do. And we're looking at it very seriously. I'm protecting everybody. You know what I'm doing? I'm protecting everybody. I want to protect our country. The New York Times says a new definition will likely be presented to the Justice Department by the end of this year. Still to come on tonight's 10 o'clock news, were you afflicted with Mega Millions <laughs> madness? If you were, you weren't alone. We'll check out the nationwide frenzy next. And later in sports, Scott hears from the Grizz football guys coming off a bye week and facing number six in the nation. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm tracker weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Green. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.